Hi, John here. Um, today is um, Monday, 7th of October, uh, November 2016. Um, I'm just make a video for the uh, documents I've just put online uh, with the proclamations uh, and the visit of the Navy ships to Auckland, New Zealand uh, from 22 countries. <coughs> and um, the USS uh, Navy, USS um, Samson, will be here as well from uh, United States. And apparently there's no ships coming from Britain. I'm surprised with that because they are our partners to the Hapu, native chiefs, not the Iwi Maori, that's the Queen and John Key. So they've managed to keep the British way away from their 75 years of Navy here and ignored us. So we're going to ignore them when it comes to Waitangi Day and terminate their land occupation titles with the British titles. That's what I'm just doing now. Um, make sure to get um, the notice to John Key uh, before they pass their TPP Act. It's in violation against our chiefs inside the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, King's Bench Native Court, with our judges, will be there on the 6th of February 2017 to meet John Key in there, and we're going to lay it on him. Renew or re re rebut, re extinguish, better word for it, his <coughs> occupation titles, the Navy's occupation titles, because they were ignored, ignored our letters. John Martin, the Chief of Navy, Rear Admiral, has ignored my letters with a King seal on it and a Maui seal and our flag of Admiralty, the real Admiral, not a Vice Admiral, the real Admiral that's got them on this land in the first place. They're going to have to prove how they got on this land in the first place. They're the Australian New South Wales mischievous convicts running as government in Wellington. That's the Navy that's there that's running amok with America, with the Clinton Foundation and Obama administration and their <coughs> fraud and corruption politics. Everything is fraud. The same as the Queen is in EU Parliament and abandoned Westminster, abandoned ship. She jumped overboard and gone the other way into Germany and Brussels, EU Parliament. And so it's left a void there for us to go and nominate. We're, I'm, I'm putting the, these legal documents together for the chiefs to um, nominate King Ernest Augustus V, living in London, as the inherent, legitimate King of Britain, UK, Hanover, Aotearoa, New Zealand, Pacific Islands, and the world, New World Order. Eight point star, eight point star, right here. Okay, that's it there. That's King William on his horse there. That's Ernest Augustus, the bloodline. Right back to Ernest Augustus the first, and his brother King William the fourth, and King George the fourth, and their father King George the third. So there you go. America is King George the third, and before that, King William the third, eight point star, Saint Patrick's. Church Order, Dublin, Ireland, and Westminster. We're going to get King Ernest Augustus, reigning monarch, sovereign, to seize this eight-point star, St. Patrick's Order, off the Pope, off the Queen, and put back into Westminster with us. And I see Ireland wants to go back into Brexit now, into, into where it was inside the British government. That's where they should be. Scottish should be in there too. Let Nicola Sturgeon go into the EU Parliament with the thugs and the rest of Scotland come back into Britain and put yourself back together with us and our flag and the eight-point star on that flag will send us around the world better still in a dual government, Maui, 
crown, King William IV. Federal State Commonwealth Government of the World. That's just another government inside Westminster. That's what we're setting up here with the sheriff to seize all the titles the Queen owns because they're fraudulent, corrupted, and in violation of the King's Bench Court. Okay, the Queen's Bench Court's going to get a bill. On the 6th of February, they're going to get a bill from me and the Chiefs, me as the Sheriff, me as the Sheriff, and the Queen, and the, the Chiefs. Okay, so this video I'm doing is to offset John Key's Prime Minister of New Zealand, rushing and ramming through the TPPA Act in violation of us here and the Chief Kingi Tauru on Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court and Titi Marae got kicked off the, the Marae there and at Ngāti Whātua in Auckland City John Key got kicked off that Marae as well for signing the TPPA without our authority. He's going to get the bill. He's going to get the bill, a trillion pounds each on their heads and he's got more on his head as well on top of that because he's breaking laws left, right and centre with Obama and the Clinton Foundation as you can see on Facebook now it's rife with voter fraud and everything fraud. So now I'm going to <coughs> um, I've uploaded the uh, PDF files on the 11 pages I've put together for this um, proclamation that I, I've, I've sent to Louise Exley, the um, uh, British High Commission office here in Wellington, New Zealand, and um, <coughs> she'll put it on the record as a complaint against the government here and the fact that the British Navy is not invited here as one of the Navy ships in the whole of the King's Commerce and King of the Sea Admiralty title that we hold here in a private contract with Britain um, government and the military navy of Britain. So we're about to seize on the titles of the navy land at Kororareka, Russell, where the first immigrants from Britain came in there and Australia, especially Australia convicts. They, they're there now, those families, I'll know which ones they are because I can tell straight off with the Manukau land title in Scotland, Britain, UK, that Manukau title is in Auckland. Seize all those other titles, those convicts titles. New South Wales, New Zealand Company titles. New Zealand Company is New South Wales, New Zealand Government Company. Versus the Manukau Land Company, Scotland. Okay, you've got that on your head now, um, John Key. You've got a bounty on your head. And all your uh, parliament, government. That's what uh, Gareth Morgan says. Uh, he's the philanthropist. He says, put a bomb under it and blow it up. That's what he's right. Blow the whole place out because it stinks. The same as the White House. It needs blowing, flattening and build a new one with all those thugs gone. We're going to get rid of the thugs. Okay, so I'll just go to this uh, document. And <clears throat> the British High Commission, UK, New Zealand, Assistant High Commissioner Limited, uh, New Zealand, uh, Louise Exley. Now I'm just writing to her, I won't read it because it's uh, quite long. All I want to say, I'll go to the big writing where I've got, please take notice. The Whakameninga Chiefs in Congress assembled on Titi Marae on the 28th of October 2016. Chief Kingi Tauru stated, started a legal process off in the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, forbidding the USS Samson Navy warship Admiral Tim Labens enforcing U.S. Admiralty Court Martial Law, Financial Martial Law and TPPA on my Crown, King William IV Admiralty Flag Jurisdiction, Native Chiefs Altair, New Zealand State Land. The Marae King William IV Admiralty Sheriff and Chiefs of the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Land Court forbids Admiral Captain Scott Swift, Commander of the USS Pacific Fleet, Proclaiming enforced U.S. Federal Government Administration Financial Court Martial Law, Queen Elizabeth II Sovereign Law on our New Zealand land. And or forbids the U.S. Federal State Government Financial Martial Law, King George III, Queen Elizabeth President, 
Obama Administration Law of Washington, D.C., Admiralty Court Martial Law of the Sea versus King William IV Admiralty over Moai Crown King William IV Federal State Admiralty Court Martial Law of the Sea. Legal, legitimate British UK private contract dual partnership and Commonwealth Government of the World by default of Queen Elizabeth II EU Parliament conflict of financial investment interest with our Moai Crown King William IV Trading Bank flag Admiralty commercial investment business. She has abandoned the sh crownship of King William IV Admiralty in Westminster Parliament for EU Parliament financial investment interest defaulted private contract 8040 Maori Treaty of Waitangi default back to Maori native Hapu Rangatira Chiefs. King William for Financial Martial Law Act private contract sovereign authority security interest still in this partnership. With the British Navy Military Chief of Defence Secretary Mike, Michael Fallon legal military protectorate in our business partnership. You are hereby served this forbidden US law enforcement martial law act on our Maui native lands. We cede back title from Queen Elizabeth II who abandoned ship. The Maui Crown King William IV trust levy debtor against her private contract corporations businesses assets land inheritance back to the legal custody of the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court, King William IV Sheriff and Maui Powerhouse Bank creditor. Okay, I'm making these notice to John Key and the captain of that ship and their legal authority that's coming with it, with their administrative, uh, Obama administrative ex laws and enforcement authority to try and put it on our land for every other native land in the world. No, the answer is no. It's forbidden on this video as being court ready uh, evidence that we forbid the chiefs and I as a sheriff there forbids any foreign entity company private company of the Queen Elizabeth and her monarch, sovereign, authority through America. It's forbidden on these lands to enforce any law, act or ordinance over our lands. Notice, US Federal State President, Government Administrators, Washington DC is forbidden from enforcing US Court Martial Law over Aotea, New Zealand, Maui Crown Federal State Native Lands, Sea Sky Air from the 17th of November 2017 Forever more past this date. Okay, so that's that's telling you when they get here with that ship to sign papers, they're forbidden to sign any contracts. In that's repugnant to the chiefs of the Whakamininga or Ngā Hapu or Aotearoa, New Zealand or New Tirini um, and sheriffs. Okay, that, this is the order. New Zealand Prime Minister John Key has forbidden, forbidden from making agreements with US Federal State Government through the Admiralty Ship Simpson and its US Captain Admiral Tim LeBenz, Commander of the US Navy Pacific Fleet, without speaking to myself, Surrogate King William IV Sheriff John Wanoa and Chief Kingi Tauro and his legal authority Whakamininga Rangatira, Chief Kingi Tauro Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court and Native Court Judges. Okay, and then we got our picture of Kingi and us inside that Waitangi Marae on the morning of the 15th of April 2016 declared and proclaimed all what I'm saying inside that court including legalising the flag, the 1835-1834 Declaration of Independence flag, founding documents of this country in New Zealand, Aotea, and legalising the pound note levy debtor instruments against every criminal that we name and put online is a trillion pounds on your head. That's a trillion pounds sterling uh, British pound note equivalent to the Maui pound note. Okay, we're putting it on a par until we take off with the business and she'll go up. 
Okay, so that's I've just made a statement on this video to the world, a witness watching, and to the um, British Secretary of Defence, Michael Ferron, I'm just writing to you shortly and send this off to you as well, and the Prime Minister of Britain, UK, Theresa May, and a letter to um, uh, Joe Biden, um, the US Secretary of State, and Obama. I was wasting time sending it to Obama because he'll throw it in the rubbish bin. So I'll send it to Joe Biden, a letter, this same letter, forbidding them, because the British military and Navy, Admiralty, and the High Court of Admiralty in London, and the British uh, Westminster Parliament, and their court martial sheriffs will seize on any levy debtor bill that I write on the pound note, the Moai pound note, that is, the Moai pound, not the Rothschilds pound note, that's his, the Moai pound note from here, from here in New Zealand, okay? This is where it's taken off from. And so I'm um, just warning, just a warning this year, warning in front of the whole world and our chiefs watching in New Zealand and Pacific Islands and all the indigenous countries of the world, the native indigenous countries of the world, leaders watching this video, that this applies to you as well. This flag of ours, the Declaration of Independence flag, is lethal in its admiralty state against any pirates and any thuggery going on between us and Britain. It's a contract, private contract flag of Admiralty. It's a private contract. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so we're going down to the first page. Uh, we're on page, we've well, gone past page three that I've read. And then we're on to page four. We've got the flag. This is the PDF file that I put on our website, moaipowerhouse.com. You'll see it's under uh, the Moai uh, Federal State Government. Okay, you go to that page and you'll see the PDF file there and take the whole file off um, because it'll come out better than pictures that I have on Facebook. So we've got um, King William Four flag fixed at the top mast full time on Waitangi Treaty Grounds. So we've got our flag upside down there. It was put upside down on the Treaty Grounds on the 6th of February this year, 2016, and it was put upside down. That's on that ship, that ship of Admiralty, British ship of Admiralty was put up upside down. And it was put upside down on Kororareka, Russell, the other ship, and on the 20, 20th of March, 1834, that flag was put upside down there as distress. So that marked the first legitimate British people landing in their immigrants on that land there. That's the title I'm talking about, that we're severing that title and all the rest of the titles from that one back to the Manukau Land Company titles in Scotland, back into Westminster, and for Westminster to reissue new titles under the Maui Crown King William for Trust. From the British, from the Queen Victoria Trust, we seize on that too. We're seizing everything the Queen has ever put together fraudulently with our King's Bench Court, Native Court, inside the Crown King Queen Crown Bench Court, it's always been there. Now we're holding them to them account. We're holding them to account for the fraud and corruption of our King's Bench Court. Okay. So if we go past the flag, and then we've got um, the chief uh, of Whakatohea down in the Matatua region, um, Jim Wikotu. And now he was the one putting the flag up, and he's going to put it up the right way. Once he gets it up the right way on Russell. Those orangutillas there, on that land block there, that's their land. They're only occupying the land, the, the immigrants, the Navy people are only occupying those lands. I'm, I'm giving you a fair warning because you're not performing to our needs and our um, instructions to meet with us. You never met with us, John Martin. You never had somebody come up the hill at Kororareka on the 10th of April 2016, and you never had anybody come to uh, Waitangi Marae to meet us in that Marae court um, on the 15th, and you never had anybody come and meet us on the 28th 
of October, our 182 years, this flag has been flying and let you onto that land block there and let you all around Devonport here and everywhere in this country on that authority of King William IV. Okay? You never acknowledge King William IV. And so we're going to write the bill to you and present it to you when you come inside that marae and the chief's uh, native court judge will make a ruling and I'm the sheriff to seize everything I put my hands on, including 77 Cook Street. So here we go. This is what Jim's saying. <clears throat> but I was invited by the Navy to be here at 10 a.m. today to meet him, to meet them on the 10th, that is, 10th of April, 2016. They never show. This was on Kururarek, on, on the top of Mikey Hill, above Russell Village. The ship mast is there, the British ship of their title to the land from Britain, Westminster. You'll notice that the government here has gone past Westminster and they're going through the EU Parliament, through the back door, through America, under the Queen, back through to here to try and seize these lands for themselves and the thugs, elite people. No, it's not going to work. We're going to jam you with this flag in the King's Bench Court and drive you off the land. Okay? So then he says, in order to discuss the reasons why I flew this flag, upside down at Waitangi this year, right? I've already told the Navy that my actions at Waitangi are a distress signal and so I told the people of my hapu, John Key is treating us like slaves and it ends here. He's saying it ends here. He's one of the chiefs with an original surname native to this land. And the Matatu Waka has got indigenous surnames. So if you're up in that area, up in Kororareka, your name must be original. It may not be made up, like a lot of surnames are made up. I'm just saying to you, Hohepa Epiha, your real surname is Epping. From Epping, New South Wales, Australia, and Epping in Sussex, England. There, I've said it. You can't talk ahead of someone like Manukau or someone like Parapara or Taurua or an original name you can't change under the male system of law. That's the Maui Crown Law. L-O-R-E. Okay, you, no one's going to get away with this and with that flag. The two memorials, Maui's statue memorial standing in Queen Elizabeth Great Court in London since 1868 when America lost its sovereignty the same time as the Maui got lifted up off East Island and took to London. That's when America lost its sovereignty to Britain. Okay, I'm saying that's our memorial and you, however, you have to talk for yourself, your Epping family. Do not talk with your surname that doesn't come from somewhere. It doesn't come from the middle of the ocean. It has to come from Tahiri, Samoa, or, 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 or Tahiri, or one of the islands, Fiji, Australia, China. It has to come from somewhere. So you came from Sussex, England, through Australia, New South Wales, with the convicts, the escaped convicts to this country that John Key's running in Wellington. There. That's how I say it in that marae up there and you're not going to go anywhere from that because that's John Key's side you're talking about that's screwing these titles up okay this is the man here <coughs> saying John Key's treating us like slaves that it ends here when he says it ends here that means him and the natives I'm going to have a meeting with them down at Whakato here I'm going up to Ho Hokianga and have a meeting with the natives and I'll find the right surnames to speak like him, okay? They don't appear on the Marais very much, but I know who they are. I can tell all the surnames, it won't take long to pull it to bits and find what's with the name. Where does it come from? And you stand 
with your surname. Nobody else's. You don't fungi. You don't. This is how Moai works to straighten out all the skullduggery and scatterbrains inside the system that's running it off the rails. This is where this Maori word comes from. The crown created it. It's not a tribe. It's not a tribe at all. It's the hapu, not the iwi. It's the hapu. The iwi Maori is the invention of the crown. That's what I'm saying to Jim. You pick the right ones. He's, he's picking the right ones up from Matatua, Waka, and the ones up there, because they're all mixed up up there with their families. They're not genuine, I can tell. That's why I stick to the Manukau title, Manukau Land Company, in Scotland, in Britain, Westminster. Those titles are of the whole country. And Chatham Islands is UFOs. They've got UFOs and things in there you, you don't know about. Those are here with me from Mohi Manukau. That's their own history. The Moriori history is theirs, not for anybody to talk about. And so I'm keeping their things private. The things I don't want anybody to know, and the Ototongas up in Waitangi, I'll keep your things private. The William family and Ototongas, I'll keep your things uh, safe with me. And the ones down in Nelson, Gerbil Island, those ones down there where I went to see you people on Wakatu Marae, I've got your things here safe. If you're watching this video, it's safe with me. They're all tying in with the Manukau title in the South Island, in the North Island, and the Chatham Islands. Okay? No way to get around it. And they, these guys are, are more the Turuhu guys. Turuhu Pataparai, the ones in the bush, got burnt out of the bush by the British. So, here we go. We'll carry on. <coughs> he says, it ends here, we're going to Waitangi, that's on the 17th, 2017, on the 6th of February, we're going to Waitangi to send a message to the Navy fleet to make take this matter to England, okay? Well, I'm writing the letters to the Navy before the 6th of February, here and in Britain, and if this Navy doesn't perform, it's non-performing. We get the British Navy to come and clean them out. And that's what's going to happen. We don't take silence as an answer in a contract. We're in a private contract with British military, Navy, and British Westminster government, with King William, with our flag. Okay, you've seen the flag enough times. But we're, that's a contract. That's the receipt of a contract. To go anywhere in the world and trade once we get this land sorted out. Okay? Take this matter to England, that's what he says, that my actions at Waitangi are a distress signal from the information Te Kaya has been able to gather. Hereditary chiefs at Waitangi, this was one of the flags presented by James Buckley before on the 10th of March 1834. Yeah, it was presented on the 10th of March 1834 and put into action on the 20th of March, 1834, by the British. As soon as they stepped on the land, this flag became legal as the flag of New Zealand. Okay? The British did it, not the New South Wales gazetted one, that the 1835 is a gazetted one from Australia to set up the 1840 treaty. Not that one. The fucking meaning is this one. As soon as that British man, Clinton, uh, James uh, Reedy Clinton, Captain James Reedy Clinton stepped off his ship and proclaimed the land belongs to the king. That's when this flag flew, flew up and and started the native court with James Busby. They had the native court all ready to go, and the flag, that's the one that was there, right there and then. <coughs> Presented by James Busby on the 10th of March 1834 that this flag was adopted as the nation's first flag. See, it's flying on that flying on that uh, shipmast above Kororareka. Our lands will be returned to us from the New Zealand Navy. He's demanding the New Zealand Navy give our land back because they're the ones that stole it or took the title to Australia and not to Britain. Okay? They're using the British ship in, as the authority from the New South Wales government through John C. Wellington and through the US federal state government and the Queen going around that way instead of coming straight to us. She's going around the back door and we're catching her with King William's flag right in the face, both sides, to England and this way. She's caught, she's caught. 
uh, Takaya have requested information from the New Zealand Navy on the significance of these dates in present New Zealand day, present day New Zealand. While those gathered here believe this flag still retains its significance, that's Jim talking on Takaya Mary Television that we were interviewed, I was interviewed, interviewed with him. This flag still remains its significance. That's me there with that. These words are Tekaya Maori Television. You can see their stamp on the videos. You can see Maori Television on there as their copyright. Okay? This is only for this reason why I'm putting it here. Because Tekaya is waiting for the Navy to give them an answer in response to these two dates. The 10th of March, 2000, uh, 10th of March, 1834, and the 20th of March 1834. They're not saying anything. They zip their mouth up because they're caught between New South Wales and, and Navy uh, and British Navy, which has this flag standing right in front of them. This flag still remains its, its significance as the nation's first flag. It says it was the, the nation's first flag. It flew from 1834 to 1840. That shows you all that time, six years, this flag was the New Zealand flag. There. That's the founding of this country. And then New Zealand puts up the, the Union Jack flag and says it got its own declaration. No, no, they didn't get it. They haven't got a declaration of sovereignty of their own. They borrowed ours and we're going to take it off them. That's what's going to happen. So we've got the ship here, the Ocean Monarch, um, a ship with our flag flying on it. And it flew on the shore saddle and the P&O shipping lines, okay? And then I'm standing there with the flag and the ship mast in the background on the treaty grounds, Waitangi treaty ground, and on to the right, that's the Kororareka ship mast, those two ship masts, that one where I'm standing with the flag, the Confederation flag, M34, M35, and the ship mast in the background opposite the Waitangi treaty house in the treaty grounds. Okay, so I'm standing there the morning we came out, and I took the photo as the sun was rising. It was still dark at 5 o'clock in the morning we went there. And funny enough, they didn't open the marae for us on the 28th of October 2016. 182 years we wanted to put the, put the flag up on the flagship on that day. And Maori Rapana didn't let me know he wasn't going to come and open the gate. It just went silent. And Paul Tipene was there, the police constable from um, uh, Kirikiri, uh, and I'm pleased with him. Thank you, um, Paul, for turning up. He said to me, where are they all? Where's everybody? I said, they're all down at the Tauranga uh, 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 Popo, the ancestors in Titi Marae uh, Camping Ground. That's all those Popo you see in the paddock. Um, those are the ancestors um, that uh, they were there and they went back into the marae there, Titi Marae. I said, don't come over. Okay, Jim was on the other end on the phone. I said, no, don't come over. The gate's not open. And uh, we're, we're disappointed with um, with um, Maori not letting us know. And, the, and, and Paul Tipene was disappointed as well. He said, it's not like Maori not to open the gate or say something and he didn't do it. He didn't even write or text or, or phone or anything. I spoke to him the day before on the 27th, he said he's busy at a meeting, he'll ring me later, he didn't. So that goes on the record. These are all complaints that I've sent on this here into the high British High Commission uh, office in Wellington to go straight to Britain as a complaint against a system here, against um, uh, the King William flag and Admiralty flag of jurisdiction, Crown and Anchor. Okay, he's Crown and Anchor. That, that got them on the land, we, we, can, we can throw them off the land with it because they're non-performance, they're non-performance. Now, the next picture after that is um, Devonport in, in England and Devonport here and Plymouth in England and Plymouth here. Those match up with our titles uh, to the Manuka Land Company there and with King William's yard, the biggest naval yard in the world. He spent 50 years in the Navy setting all this up for us. And this is what they do.